gentlemen, back on the Ford Ranger 2003 Edge. 3.0 liter V6. What we're working on today, on we finished up the brakes over there on the front. Right now, right now working on getting this seat out of here. Cause I'll show you kind of what it does, right? You got the handle down here. Usually you pull that and it just goes back, but you have to like push it and then it just goes back like that. And that's not me holding it. Look, look, I'm not even holding the thing. Okay, so that's that's not good. Uh, and not just not it's not just for comfort. That's for safety, you know. Because I can finagle the I can finagle the handle down here and kind of push it down and kind of get it to set in here. It'll catch. I can get it to set right like that in low rider mode. <laughs> Which that's not good because, you, you know, one, because when you're driving, I mean, you know, you see guys driving like this all the time and it looks all cool and all, whatever. But when you're at that angle, one, you can't see what you're supposed to be able to see out of the vehicle, right? You can't really see as much. I guess that depends on how tall you are and everything. But also, if you're in an accident, you don't want to be at this angle if you're in an accident. Let's just say it could cause extra injury. I won't go into details, but it could cause extra injury if you're sitting at this angle, especially if you're in a front on collision. The airbag may not be as effective. It's got two settings, this and like that down there, which both of those aren't good. Being too close to the steering wheel, I mean, you don't want to be this close when the airbag goes off, right? <laughs> I think we talked about that in the last video about the uh, airbag being close to your face. So that's the reason why I'm going to take this guy apart. But also when it does catch on there and stay in one position, I tested it out and I pushed back on the seat. Like I, I put my hands on the steering wheel and pushed back against the seat and it just went boom and I came down. So that's definitely not good. Um, Cause you don't want to like get in an accident and you think the seat's good and it's not. So I'm going to take it out. I'm going to work on the seat itself, the mechanisms inside the seat to see if I can rectify that somehow. All right, so we'll get working on that now. All right, so what I've got so far, I went ahead and took the seat completely out and took all its innards, or in this case now outards, but I took all the stuff that's, uh, you know, for the seat belts. I got that right over here. Uh, I just took it out just to get it out of the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that back on here in a second. This right here is basically the, um, the spring back here is the one that controls when you slide the seat forward. You pull that bar up and then it slides the seat back and then that spring tension helps the seat to slide forward. This one right here is a spring that should attach from right here where that little hole is. I'm about to address that here in a second. And then it runs behind this bracket all the way up and then fits on there. And it fits on there with these little studs like so basically this rod right here, once I take this nut off, I slide it through this hole. And then this bottom part right here is supposed to have a bolt that goes in there. But as you can see, I found our culprit here on both sides. This one, this bolt is completely sheared off, which would also explain why when I looked at this, when I pulled it out, it looks all marred up and everything just from use of sliding the seat back and forth. It just, the plastic, the little boot around it kind of got marred up a little bit, probably because that thing got loose and then completely sheared off. So what I'm working on now is tapping this uh, screw out. I'm gonna drill and got, I got a tap, that, uh, like a 360 tap that I can tap that thing out. And on the other side, it's the same story. Now, the other part of this assembly, so that was that side. And this side is the part where you got the hand lever that where you pull the lever and you know set your seat back. So as you saw before, I didn't have that option because these two bolts were completely sheared off. Now the other one is down in there. You can't really see the bolt sheared off, but it looks just, it's sheared off just like the other side. You can kind of see a little bit where the hole is right where my fingernail is. Uh, there's a bolt running through the back. You can kind of see right there. And there's supposed to be a bolt head there, but there's not because it got sheared off. And same story where this hooks in, you can see it looks all marred up and everything. That bolt head's probably rolling around somewhere in the cab. I don't know. This seat's been messed up since I've been working on this truck. So that's gonna be our culprit, which is a good thing, because that means I don't have to buy another one of these assemblies. 
nor do I have to work on this assembly and try to figure it out because I already saw what the issue was. I got all kinds of grade eight bolts in Loctite. I'm confident that once I put those 560 bolts back in there, it's going the seat is gonna work the way it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this and get those bolts out uh, that are sheared off. And then we're gonna go look, I'm gonna go with my bolt then over here and get some bolts, which I'm, I'm pretty sure I got and put them in there. is what I got so far. Drilled out that little bolt right there. And as you can see, a little, that little pink tint right over here on this nut, that's a little uh, high strength Loctite that I just put on there. I ran a grade eight bolt through there uh, with the Loctite to hopefully prevent me from having to take this thing back out <laughs> and work on a sheared bolt. So two sheared bolts was the main thing that was causing us seat to be unsafe so instead of going out spending 300 to a thousand bucks i just used a a 79 cent bolt that i've been holding on to probably for the last six years or so um, and then it basically just bolts on right here which it was not fully bolted on before which is why it wouldn't stay up and then i'm going to put this nut on here and tighten it up and then that's going to hold the spring that allows it to recline back and forth the seat will work again like it used to when it was new. Just know that. And then once I put the spring on, and this, uh, I'll show you once I put this other little attachment on, um, we'll put the seat belt, I always call it seat belt, tensioner, whatever. Yeah, just uh, don't mind the air, the fan noise in the background. It's hotter than fish grease outside. But uh, we'll, uh, We'll put that on and then uh, we'll go from there. through a little bit of trial and error with uh, just in the bolts and everything. I actually got this thing to go back like it's supposed to and then and then pop back up like it's supposed to. It goes down and then get it to pop back up. It's kind of what I wanted. So here we go back on this 2003 Ford Ranger V6 Flex Fuel Edge. We're gonna be taking off the rear drums today. That last video you saw that we were taking off the front. I already planned on changing out these brake shoes in the rear because they have drums, which is, was crazy when I found out. And I was like, wow, they still put drums on these. You know, it's 2003. I don't know. I guess nowadays I don't see too many drums on a 2016 and later. But these have 10 inch drums on them. You can, in this particular uh, Ford Ranger 2003, you can either have nine inch drums or 10 inch drums. And the way you do that, there's two different ways you can look at it. You see how like this drum is smooth right here on this portion. And the 10 inch have that. Now you can see it's kind of like a perfect cylinder. It's not, the nine inch brakes have little ridges. They're like little cooling fins, I guess, or structural ridges right here. Th those are indicative of the nine inch drums. The way that you tell for sure is you measure from the middle here to the middle there. It's probably better if you take the wheel off, but you measure from there to there, 
if you get if you measure nine inches nine inch brakes if you measure 10 inches 10 inch brakes right pretty easy stuff i'm gonna get all this brake dust off too it just kind of wipes off here but that's from the other brakes i mean it comes off pretty easy but for some reason i couldn't get it off with the greaser and just the pressure washer alone i got to get in there with some kind of scrub pad and, and really really get in there i might even just take these off just so that i can get these like completely cleaned off because it looks pretty disgusting it's not disgusting but like it just makes it look like it's at, in disrepair which technically kind of i guess this truck is in disrepair but it's getting it's getting back roadworthy it's getting pretty close to roadworthy and i don't want to look looking more in disrepair than it actually is is my point i to jack it up on one side take the tire off kind of like we did the brake rotors on the on the front uh take the tire off work on those drums and if you check out this picture you can see how drums are different than shoes the different parts that you need to change out and adjustments that need to be made that you don't do on the rotors i wonder why these new vehicles don't come with drums as much anymore because there's a lot of springs and levers and things like that you need to pay attention to and adjustments you need to make where you don't need to make on the rotor you know the rotor uh caliper brake pad system uh, so without further ado i'm gonna jack this thing up and show you more about like what the brake drums look like on the inside All right, so here we can see the innards of the brake drum. So this is what it looks like. Usually it was easy to come off. I just kind of gave it a few light taps uh, with the old rubber mallet and uh, it came off really easy. Uh, if it's not, if it doesn't come off easily, there's a, uh, there's a rubber hole that you have to access this right here, which is the retractor. And you gotta get an alignment tool to use a screwdriver and alignment tool to pop this thing down and then it'll squeeze the brake shoes inward away from the drum itself because that's basically how it stops. And basically the brake shoes here, which are there and right here, they expand and push against the inside right here. Much like the rotor, it's a surface just like the rotor is right here, but it pushes out it pushes out instead of clamping down on the rotor like it does on the front. All right, so I got this off. I need to clean this off with a brake clean and brake clean, and you don't want to use compressed air because you don't want to breathe this brake dust in. There was a, a lot of it that kind of fell off right here. Before I get into working on this thing too heavily, uh, I want to go ahead and get a mask on because you don't want to, it's bad for your health to breathe in the brake dust off of here. Uh, so that's what you want to do and you don't use any petroleum based um, Products to clean off like WD-40 or whatever uh, unless there, There's only one time that you'd use the WD-40 is if you know, like Some of these parts right here are hard to move or something like that. It's about the only time you use it once you get all this stuff off and you got the the drum off uh then use brake clean. I'm gonna use brake clean to clean all this stuff off before I even take it off. You see all these little springs and everything here, right? Boom, boom, right there. Uh, there's also this, these two guys right here, right there, and right there. Uh, I believe it's called a retractor spring, tensioner spring. And after heating up, the heating and cooling down cycle, it causes these things to lose tension to where over time the spring won't won't hold the brake shoe and it'll drag against the drum itself because the brake shoes will be expanded all the time and it'll cause more heat and wear and cause the shoes to wear out a lot more quickly okay now brake shoes kind of like the the pads about the same story here's a new uh brake shoe right here that is picked up uh it's a little bit closer to the camera than that one but i can noticeably see that there's there's more brake shoe on the new one than over here. They're not, I don't know if you can say that, say that they're completely obliterated, but there is a lot of brake dust on them. And I think it's, I think it was time to change these out. I don't think uh, I had full, full braking power 
on those. It's starting to get pretty bad now. And I was pointing out all those springs because I got a little kit right here. You might as well go ahead and prick this kit up if you're doing brake shoes on a 2003 Ford Ranger Edge. 10 inch or nine inch brakes, on a brake drum. You wanna go ahead and pick this guy up because they're only about eight, nine bucks, depending on which ones you have. I got the nine inch ones are a little bit cheaper. The brake shoes are the same. They're about 32 bucks for four brake shoes. If you're doing brake shoes, you need to change out both sides. You, you don't wanna just change out just this side. You're gonna have to change this one out and the other one at the same time. You don't wanna do just one, okay? Uh, so we're gonna be changing out all these parts and I'll explain to you all these parts and um, you know, while we're changing them out and stuff like that, other than, you know, springs lose tension after being put under stress for, you know, extended periods of time. I don't see anything breaking. I didn't see anything rolling around inside the, there. So it looks like that was, that was good to go. But we're just gonna change out all these little springs or these guys right here, just because of the heating up and cooling down cycle, like I was saying, wears them out after a while and they are more prone to break. So. You know, you don't want to pick up their shoes and be like, oh, the springs are in good shape. I'm just going to leave them in there. You can do that and they may work for a little bit, but they may not last as long as your shoes do. And then they cause you problems when you're on the highway, right? When you don't want them to fail, they'll fail. So it's good just to go ahead and spend the eight, nine bucks, pick this up, change them out. Doesn't take too long. It's just a matter, matter of unhooking, unhooking, put the new one in. It's easy peasy. All right, so we're going to get started on this one, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Well, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And I'm actually, this outside portion, I'm going to paint it black. Because it's too easy. I got some high temp black paint that I still got left over from the block painting. Might as well, you know, just make it look shiny. Why not? All right, ladies and gents, uh, now we got a little bit newer looking drum and a little bit more colorful. Uh, looks dark out here now, I swear. I always start doing this work, this work right when it starts getting dark, right when the mosquitoes are hot and heavy because that's the smartest thing to do. But we did get the new pads put on there. Sorry, new shoes put on there. I got the old ones sitting down there. All right, I'm getting ready to go take the drum, which I already painted and everything and cleaned out with brake clean. And I'm Go ahead and put her on, but real quick, I'm just gonna explain what I changed out with the, yeah, I mean, you saw the colorful springs and everything, and I think you can kind of see them now. Uh, so basically, you got, the way this thing works is you got the shoes. Uh, these springs help retain uh, the brake shoes. So the, when you apply the brakes in the truck and you hit the brake pedal for the rear, there's like a little pistons that push the shoes out with these little teeth right here that push against this shoe, and there's one back here behind the spring that pushes against that shoe. So you hit the brake and they expand out, right? And then when you let off the brake, it lets the pressure off and these springs help bring those shoe, both of these shoes back to the resting position. Uh, this lever right here is for the handbrake. I changed out these two retainer springs that start to lose their oomph after a while. And basically what they do, that holds, that holds the shoes to the actual wheel or to the, to the drum itself, and so they don't pop out of there. Um, and then we replace this bottom spring over here uh, that helps the bottom uh, stay on the adjuster screw. And the, the, adjusters, the adjuster lever that's connected to the actuator. It's this little plate back here that's attached with this little horseshoe clip. I changed out the horseshoe clip on that one behind the spring, a little shiny deal back there. Um, the actuator that 
is attached to another little spring back here that's the e-brake and so that's basically in a nutshell uh, where all the stuff runs in a drum you know for your foot brake uh, e-brake and everything inside the drum that kind of makes everything work together it shouldn't give me too much trouble I ran into some trouble because this uh, other little shiny deal that's attached to this yellow spring it's in the same hole as that yellow spring right behind this little tooth of this uh, the handbrake lever as they call it it gave me some issue because it fell out and I did not know what it went to <laughs> I was like where does this piece go it's way shinier than all the other ones I almost believe that it didn't even come from the drum but it had to because I saw it fall out but it actually connects to the adjuster screw lever so it holds this up so that it can stay see how that tooth is right there there's like a toothed wheel right there and this lever holds it is hitting against that tooth wheel so the adjustment screw doesn't come out of adjustment so if this comes out of too far out of adjustment um, then the shoes won't they'll either not come back far enough or will come back too much and will affect negatively affect your braking ability so that spring helps keep tension on that lever to keep tension on this tooth so the adjustment screw doesn't come out of adjustment <sighs> so yeah that's a mouthful seems like a lot of springs for nothing it seems like the rotors and the calipers was like way easier to work on you know it's like so many moving parts and everything but just like everything you do on, on, on a vehicle um, there's always a there's an easy way of doing it there's a you know best ways of doing it but it looks it looks more daunting than it actually is All right, folks, real quick here before I get out of here. Uh, we got here an idle air temperature sensor. All right, she normally goes right over the throttle body and two bolts. They go in the top, one and two, right? And it has a gasket in there that will help prevent any vacuum leak as the air is coming into the intake, All right? So you got your air intake tube. So you got your air filter, air box down here, mass airflow sensor, air tube to the throttle body. This is the throttle body with the Ford logo on there. Uh, just on top of that is where the idle air temperature sensor sits. And then you got, you know, map, the throttle position sensor and uh, map sensor somewhere in there. Uh, 
and she gets gummed up every now and then because it helps the basically what this does is it helps the computer to know how much air or how much air to well the temperature sensor but also it like lets air in as it needs more air so as it if it's basically these are really prone to gum up and get stuck uh, and they will either not open or or they will be kind of sticky when they open so it kind of gives your car or truck a rough idle if those are all gummed up or just in disrepair or if this electrical connector is not sending anything back and forth to the computer a lot of times people will just replace these but there for this truck it's probably about 20 bucks now the the manual says that you can clean the inside of this out now keep in mind this you could not see any shiny on here it was all subdued black like it'd been hit with a flame torch with carbon all over it and the carbon it wasn't just dusty carbon it was like gummy carbon it was like really thick uh, uh you know like tar so i got me some gum out carb cleaner and sprayed on it for about 42 minutes you know sprayed it let it sit i brush uh, took a brush to it a very very light brush not a wire brush but a very very light brush just to get that cleaner in those little nooks and crannies and uh get up in there let it sit spray it jet spray it out use the brush back and forth i did that for a few minutes uh also in that other gasket kit I'm, i've been meaning to do this anyways to change out this gasket this is the only gasket that i had left i should have done it when i was doing the throttle body before i put the engine in but uh i guess now is a good time as any to do it um i just it had been sitting there and i was like oh i forgot to put that in so right now i'm doing that changing the changing that out so hopefully cleaning this out will help make the not really super rough idle but slight rough idle that i've been hearing uh hopefully that might have cleared it up we'll put this back in and we'll check out and see how that works folks listen to this it was normally sitting at 750 rpm and just spraying that out it's already i'm kind of it's already got a higher idle here you can kind of tell the computer's like trying to adjust i'm gonna turn the ac off here the computer's trying to adjust because it's used to trimming fuel and everything it looks like it's trimmed fuel down the computer already trimmed the fuel down back to where it was but it doesn't really feel like that rough idle that I was feeling before. It runs a little smoother now. So that might've been, you know, one thing, but it, you know, it definitely improved it. We'll keep working on it bit by bit. I'm, I'm gonna get this thing working real good. Well, with that being said, I hope you guys liked what you saw in today's video. If you did enjoy what you saw in today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, big greasy thumbs up. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If there's anything else that you would like to see in a future video, just go ahead and put that down in the comment section i do read that check us out on facebook and instagram mickey bobby one facebook is just mickey bobby but thanks for joining us today's video and uh, we'll catch you in the next one when we hit that transmission